Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Things We Said Today, our weekly Beatles podcast in which we discuss uh, virtually anything in the in the Beatle world, both uh, the group's history and uh, also what's uh, what's going on today, which is in fact what we're going to be talking about uh, on this uh, on this episode. Uh, I'm Al Sussman from Beatle Fan Magazine, and I'm here with my three cohorts. Uh, first, the uh, the host of the syndicated Beatles music show, Every Little Thing, Ken Michaels. Hey, Ken. Hi, Al. How you doing? How you doing? From Examiner.com, the uh, uh, the writer for uh, Examiner, Beatles Examiner, and any number of other Examiner columns, uh, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Al. Hello, Thanks. everyone. And our uh, our resident musicologist, longtime contributor also to Beatle Fan Magazine, and uh, these days writing for any number of uh, publications, doing uh, doing classical reviews and such. Uh, Alan Cozen. Hey Al, hello everyone. And on uh, today's show, we're going to be uh, talking about, as I said, we talk about things that are that uh, from the, uh, the group's history as well as what's going on today and uh, we're going to be talking about something that'll be happening in let's see when this airs it'll be exactly three weeks uh, and that is the Chicago Fest for Beatles fans which will be happening um, August 14th 15th and 16th at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare in um, actually Rosemont uh, Illinois, which is, uh, right outside of, literally right outside of Chicago as part of what they, what they call Chicago land. And, uh, and our guest is the man who, um, who really created all of this, uh, who created, uh, the fest or as it was originally known, Beetle Fest, uh, and has been doing it for 40, uh, I'm, I'm losing count, 41 years. And that is Mark Lapidus. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Good to be on. Hey, Mark. Thank you for inviting hey, me. Hi, guys. Hi there. <laughs> so, uh, Al, first of all, it's less than three weeks already now. So, uh, whenever this airs, it'll still be less than three you're weeks. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> you're the math major. Yes, I was. Yes. <laughs> you know why I failed. So that's true. It'll be, it'll be actually two weeks when this airs. On um, you know over this over this coming weekend, uh, so it will be two weeks. That's right. So uh, why don't you give us um, first of all an overview of uh, of what we can expect at the Chicago Fest this year? Oh, what we have this year, we have a really good lineup of guests. Bob Eubanks is our headliner, and a lot of people say, "Why Bob Eubanks? He hosted the Newlywed Game. He's a TV star." Why do we need, why Bob Eubanks? Well, the fans know who he is. He is the guy who was a radio DJ, sort of like Cousin Brucey on the East Coast. He was on KRLA in the mid, in 64 when the Beatles exploded. And he wanted to make sure that the Beatles played Los Angeles. And I don't know why, he, I'm sure they would have played it, but there were a lot of bids out and he wanted to make it so it was right. And he uh, approached Brian and they talked and they got, they came to an agreement and, but he had to put up $25,000. So he had to put his house up as collateral. I don't know how his wife was happy or not happy about that, but he did it. And of course it turned out to be one of the most uh, famous of all the Beatles concerts and um, a surprise addition that we just, so he'll be there talking about those concerts. He produced not only the 64 concerts, but 65 and then, at the Dodger Stadium in 1966. So he has a lot of great stories. He was our guest at the last two fests in L.A. and New York. And he's a one that, he's a real great entertainer. He really is. People loved him. And we asked him if he wants to do a, a beatly wed game. And he said no. This was in L.A. But in the New York show, he came up to Carol and I and said, uh, why don't we do it in Chicago? So we are going to have the world's only uh, Beatly Wed game hosted by the only person who could host it and claim his show, Bob Eubanks. By the way, we should give credit that the idea for that ah. came from our uh, occasional co-host here, Mr. Uh, Tom Frangione. 
yep, Tom was, Tom approached me with that idea and then I approached Bob and he just said, no, he didn't think it was right, but then he thought about it and that's when he said he wants to uh, do it. And uh, we're very excited to, about that. Now, the addition that, that a lot of people do not know yet, unless they read our, our email blasts, is that we have located and invited, and he accepted our invitation, the man who played the Beatles on the U.S. radio, on US radio first, from WLS in Chicago, the one and only Dick Biondi. Hmm. He'll, be, he'll be coming on. I scheduled it right before 6 o'clock on Saturday evening. So that uh, he'll be on for a little while, and then we'll have both Bob and Dick together uh, for the first time in a, in a long, long time talking Beatles. And there's two legendary announcers, DJs, and who else but Terry Hammett, our own legendary. Yeah. Uh, we'll be doing the talks with her, with them. Yeah. For then, uh, for <clears throat> a, a radio geek like me, that's going to be a big deal. Did, either, did any of you hear about that or hear the tape from the guy in Delaware? Did that make the rounds? Which um, one? This guy in Delaware, he's a first-generation fan, mm-hmm. taped eight minutes or so of the WLS radio show at night because Clear Channel Radio. I know I used to get WLS at night at the Catskills mm-hmm. in the summer regularly, and people in Chicago could get New York WABC. Those are the two big 50,000-watt 50, 50, stations. Right. Um, so this guy taped eight minutes of it and played – I forgot the songs he was playing, but then he said, then Dick Biondi – it's all Dick Biondi. And then he announced, here are the Beatles. It wasn't the first time playing it, but it's got to be one of the first few. Uh, it was Please Please Me dated uh, – I think he said it was February 20-something. Right. In 63. In mm-hmm. fact, uh, Robert uh, Rodriguez – has posted it a couple of times. Okay, well, we posted it on Facebook. Right. And it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, I'm sure the first time he, he played it, I'm sure he made a big deal about it and talked about it. But we'll find out in person when we speak to him. Right. In a few wow. Weeks. Yeah, he, he may not have, you know, made a, made a big deal of it because, let's face it, at that point, they were just another group on VJ Records with their name spelled wrong on the record. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, maybe, uh, maybe the head of VJ made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Like, yes, that's very possible. A uh, free gambling Being bet. in Chicago, <laughs> it's very possible. It is. Uh, also, one of the reasons why they were played on that station is because VJ Records was based yeah, out of well, Chicago. Absolutely. So they knew, they knew the DJs right, there. Yep. So... You know, a lot of people think that I Want to Hold Your Hand was the first song that was played in America, and that's certainly not true. you got to go back to the other singles that were released in, in 63 right. here. Yeah, they, they were all played at, one, at some point in, in the country. Mm-hmm. Right. He's credited. You guys figured out with Bruce Spicer and a bunch of other experts. Right. Came up with that, that he did it because he was playing new music. I think yeah. he still does on his show. He, the guy's 83 years old, I believe. He's still doing the late night shift from mm-hmm. 11 p.m. to 2 a.m., five nights a week. So being a DJ must give you good blood because Cousin Bruce does it twice a, twice a week at night in mm-hmm. New York. Yeah. Serious. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's great to hear those, those voices, those legends. If you guys can track it down, look for the cruising series that Biondi did. Yes. That is, I, it, it's awesome. He, it's one of the better, those were all his? I didn't know that. Well, actually, just no, one, not all. one was one, his. Yeah, right. Just one, just one is his. But yeah. the, his, his, uh, his is great. His is fantastic. I mean, his is one of the better ones in that series. I have the whole series. And yeah. His is one of the better ones. Another good one is, uh, Arnie Woo Woo Ginsburg from, with who I grew up with in Boston. Right. And actually, if we wanted to, if I, if I, if I wanted to really drag the show off its topic, I'd ask you uh, about your memories of New York radio, because I, I was uh, in uh, New York in 65, or in 66, uh, when the Beatles came to Shea and, and heard them on W, and heard Brucey on WABC. So that, I mean, that whole era was just fantastic, and, oh. and, and Beyondy was such a great part of it. Yeah, well, in fact, yeah. Mark, you probably would remember this, the night that, um, uh, they were in the Warwick Hotel, and Brucey presented them with uh, the Order of the All-Americans uh, medals. We were talking about that with Dave Schwenson uh, on the last episode. 
Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't remember. I, I wasn't listening that night. I guess. Oh, that's right. You were probably at Kutcher's. No, this was this was afterwards. No, I got I got back from Kutcher's at on January fifth. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, this is this would have been in August of sixty five. And yeah, I had is... trouble getting ABC at night. I did, I could get it during the day, and I could get it at night, but it was it was in and out. It was annoying. Mm-hmm. So I I I bought a uh, brought my record player up there. <laughs> That's where I bought the Revolver in the the only record store in Monticello. Really? Yes. <laughs> See, now I was you know, uh, Mark. Mm. I was uh, in um, Morris County in Hanover. We had no trouble getting WABC there. Well, this is, this is no, you know, this is like ninety miles, ninety-five miles from Manhattan. Mm-hmm. So you can get it in Chicago, but you couldn't always get it in the Catskills. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't always easy. But well, I, you I were, oh, you were the other way. Okay, you were in the Catskills. See, I was in yes. Jersey. Right, was Jersey in- was much closer. Jersey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we've totally gotten you mm-hmm. off the track of. You uh, have. Of so the, that was our first guess. guess. <laughs> let's see where the, let's see where the second guess will take us. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. How about Louise Harrison, dear old Louise, George's sister, big sister, took care of him, nursed him back to health during their first arrival in America. And um, she hasn't been a guest in 16 years, I think. Mm-hmm. And she's always had a heart in the right place. And she's very sweet. And, you know, she she doesn't talk out of turn. and But she tells stories. And uh, she has a new book out, which I haven't had a chance to look at yet, but she'll be selling it in, in Chicago. But she's just, uh, you know, I'm glad we're having her back. It's, it's been too long. And mm-hmm. she always, everyone, uh, you know, she raised a lot of money for awareness for, for good causes and uh, raised money for good causes. So we're, we're thrilled to have her back. And I haven't seen her in a while and look forward to seeing her again. Mm-hmm. Okay, next we have, we have a musician who's one of the top musicians in the country, Mark Rivera. Almost okay. needs no introduction, but he is amazing. When we had uh, Lawrence Juber and Mark together in March in the New York Fest, it's like right. the two guys at the top of their craft in the in the whole country, maybe the whole world, and they're playing together and they're feeding off each other. I remember the Saturday night. Al, what song was they? What, what song were they doing at that moment? And were you there? Uh, I was there. It was, it was magic. It was well, one so. It was, it was with Mark Hudson. Maybe it was oh. slow down. No, probably wasn't slow down. Maybe uh, Johnny B. Good. Well, well, oh, well, Lawrence, well, Lawrence, Lawrence and Johnny B. Good. Doing Johnny B. Good while they were waiting for, for Mark to come by, come down. Right. No, it was after, No, it was later uh, on. In the, it was like near the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. They, Mark, I remember Mark did. I'm sorry. Mark did got to get you into right, my that life. Was, and that was fantastic. Right. And also Money, Money, Money from right. the new album. He Comic also Bond. did the, the flute uh, at the, uh, for the last track of Help, last track of the soundtrack, You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, okay. which was very special. Right. But this was an all-out-and-out and out rocker, and I'm standing behind stage, and all of a sudden, Lawrence starts doing something with his, with his guitar that only Lawrence can do. You know how good he is. Mm-hmm. And he starts, doing, he starts mm-hmm. playing a run that's absolutely incredible. Mark looks at him. And starts doing the same thing, and it was like for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, just out and out magic that you just couldn't create without – you couldn't plan it. And I asked right. both of them, how did you do it? They, and Lauren said – "I just we just looked at each other. It was like they when Lawrence plays guitar, he's not playing. His fingers aren't playing. It's just – it's just, it happens. Yeah. He doesn't think about it. He just mm. does it. And Mark is so good. He can just do the same thing. And I heard people, some people come up to me and actually said that to me. And other people said, Mark, it was something about tonight. It, it, just, it was just magical. And that was the moment. It really just was when music transcends the people who are playing it. It just, I guess it was like the Beatles in the recording studio. Magic happened mm-hmm. when they got together. But here are these two guys, Lawrence and Mark, and it was just absolutely Breathtaking. I should actually show it in the video room <laughs> if I could find it in time. Mm. Mm-hmm. So Mark be there, and we have some surprises, musical surprises that I thought of that the Beatles may have played in the Cavern or the Hamburg days. I haven't seen it written down anywhere, but I don't want to give it away, but mm-hmm. I believe they're going to do at least one of the two songs that I suggested. Okay, so then we have a new member, a new guest who's never been 
our guest before, although he attended a fest when Frida Kelly was there, Billy Kinsley, a member of the Mersey Beats, right? who, who had exactly Ooh. no hits in America, <laughs> but had a top five in England and a couple of top 20s. Mm-hmm. And he had the, he became very friendly with the Beatles. He must have played opening the bill for the Beatles maybe 30 or 40 times and got to know them. And there's a native Liverpoolian and he's got some great stories. People like Frida and uh, Larry Kane have been telling me for years, you got to get this guy. So we got him and he's, he's a name that nobody really heard of here, but once they see him, we're going to love him. Well, he was all he was all over Good Old Frida. He was in Good Old Frida uh, yes. quite a bit. Yes, he was. So. Well, that's why that's why he came to the show to to uh, cheer her on. Right. We got to meet briefly, and then um, this has been a couple of years. This that was the first time. So I think it's been about four or five years since he came, he came to the New York Fest, and now he's going to be a guest. Mm. Uh, and next guest, the man who replaced the one and only Graham Nash in that lovely group called the Hollies. Mr. Terry Sylvester, he was our guest, I think, seven seven years ago. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. A very nice guy, a really mm-hmm. sweetheart. And, you know, he he sang lead on uh, what, He Ain't Heavy and Long Cool Woman or co-lead harmonies. Mm-hmm. You know, those were his. And you go way back, he's also a Liverpoolian, you go way back to the Hippie Hippie Shake, which, of course, the Beatles recorded at one point. Mm-hmm. And uh, he sang lead with um, Blue Blank Mind. Swinging Blue Jeans. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Swinging Blue Jeans. Brain cells are not what they used to be, of course. Oh, I know, that. Won't know, I that. know that situation. Oh, yeah. oh, God. Don't go there. Don't go there at all. And <laughs> the next guy, he also was uh, in L.A., for I guess, for the first time and came to the New York show. The former president of Apple. He's got great stories. Jack Oliver. A nice, very nice guy. I think he's a Londoner because he got the. How did he get the job? I forgot how he said he got the job through through um, Derek, possibly. I think so, yeah. And he just worked there for a couple of years, and then they made him president in '69. So the heyday of uh, mm. of Apple, while the Beatles were still together, and then uh, you know the two years that that followed, he's got great stories, stories mm-hmm. that that other people haven't told before. So so he's he's a he's a really good guest and. I didn't see him when I was there in June of 69, but I wasn't looking for him. I was looking for four other guys. Found two of them, which was not so, which was pretty good to say the least. Yes. Yes. That's John and Ringo for all you listeners there. Right. Oh, okay. Friday, June 13th, 1969 is when I met John Lennon for the first time. And, uh, that's, I asked, after that, I walked around London. I went with my friend and, He's a, he's a, he was a big Beatles fan and, but not a, not a Beatle maniac. So I'm walking around. I shook, I shook one of God's hands tonight. I got his organ, yeah. I got his picture. I want to work for the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> well, five years later, something happened. So there you go. But we, uh, progress and digress. Let me continue. A guy who probably no, none of you ever heard of. He never, he's never been there before. A guy named Mark Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is out. What has he done? I don't know. He does a lot of stuff, but he really is. He's very musical, now, musically knowledgeable. He loves. He's really a hardcore fan. There's no question about that. And he start, we started something a year ago with him. In addition to all the other things he does, which is the, the jams at night, the Sunday mm-hmm. music uh, musicians forum, which oh is always, yeah, which I love. It's mm-hmm. always a highlight of the weekend. Mm-hmm. It's all the musical guests and puts them all together and comes up with topics to talk about and like maybe uh, rockabilly or R&B or Motown and how it connects. And um, right. he's doing a session called, that I named called We Can Write It Out, where eight people can come and sign up. It's $30 a person. There are some spaces left on, I think, one or two on Saturday. That's it. And a couple more on Sunday. You sit down in the room with your instruments and – you all together, you'll write a song within 45 to 60 minutes. And then he sends the song out to all of you, to all the people who participated. And it's, uh, it's really wonderful. You get a chance to work with a, a famous producer. This is Mark Hudson is a famous producer. Ringo and Ozzy and Hanson, number one song and, and, uh, 
guys called Aerosmith, you know, not too shabby. No. Mm-hmm. So no, right. not at all. Not at all. Not at all. So yeah. So he's so. always a, a handful and lovely to have him there and part of part of part of our circus. We'll call it <laughs> a very good part of our circus. And of course, we have Liverpool returning. They've been with us for so many years. They don't want me to tell anybody how many years. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it started in our fifth year, and uh, two of the original members are still there, Drew and Chris. And the lineup now with, with Glenn and John, it's really the, the best lineup they've ever had. Absolutely. And they're the best. I mean, they, they only play the fest, basically. And it's it's very special. But, you know, I know there's lots of other bands out there, but none like Liverpool. The only one who comes close is Fab Foe, who are also terrific, but they use 11 mm-hmm. musicians. Yeah, right. And mm-hmm. Liverpool, and they don't try to vocally sound like the Beatles. They try to get the music right, and sometimes the vo- vocals are pretty close, but they're not. It's musically they're trying to get right. Liverpool gets it all right. And there is an offshoot of Liverpool that also will be appearing at the fest. Who, who's that, Al? Uh, a little group called the Weaklings. Ah, recording stars. Owner of uh, the song that was voted... Oh, that Little Stevens Underground Garage made mm-hmm, the coolest the, record the of the coolest week. Coolest record of the week this year. Coolest record in the world this week. Right. That's about three or four weeks ago. Yeah. And um, yeah, they were terrific. They really were very good in New York, and they wanted to bring them out, and we wanted to have them, so they're going to be playing on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, we had Glenn Burtnick on our uh-huh. show to talk about right. the new album, and he was yeah. a great guy. He is. Glenn is very. He's also musically uh, very knowledgeable, and he knows his stuff. And he plays it all the time. He's hmm. out there touring all the time. That's a great album too. He really is. It is. The, to take the uh, and the originals that he wrote were terrific. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have to go back. I haven't listened to it for about a month, but I, w- I want to go back and listen to it some more before I see them. I haven't seen them in concert out here because every time they played in this area, North Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, right? Um, something has come up and we weren't we weren't able to do it, like a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> they all made it. Minor thing. So we tried about three times, but we'll we'll get to them, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Not always can get to sit and watch the entire concert at a show. So I'm a little busy. Just a little. <laughs> Just a little. Make Just a bit. Happen. So those are our main guests. We also have a couple of a few authors. A few authors, by the way. Oh, of course, everything is the whole show is is emceed by Terry Hemmert, who. Voted this, the number one Beatle fan in Chicago. She's been on radio forever. And she's just the best. You know, her musical, her WXRT is the last, the closest thing to album rock yeah. of the early 70s mm-hmm. was. It's but, true. And her radio station, WXRT, is the closest thing to it. And uh, they have, they can play, not all, they just can't play anything they want. Mm-hmm. But they do have a lot of latitude and can, and can play pretty much what they like. Not quite. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's really special. And she's, okay. she's wonderful. She's a really dear friend of ours. I can't wait to see them. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. We, we get together ahead of time as soon as we come out. Either go to Gino's or some other place with, for, for a nice Italian food, which is known, they're known for in Chicago. So we have a lot of guest authors and, you can go to thefest.com and look them all up, or I can tell you some more. <laughs> we have Al Sussman. Who? Al Who? Sussman is a, is a guest author. Besides being a panel moderator and uh, name that tune coordinator with Tom. Right. Jack of all but, trades, I guess. A, a ja- a, an Al of all trades. Right. Oh, by the way, Tom Franjone, <laughs> Terry has slowed down a little bit, and she doesn't have the yes. stamina to do the whole show mm-hmm. anymore. So she picked out all the things that she thinks she can do, and Tom will be doing most of the other interviews. But it's only a few. Terry's doing a majority. Mm-hmm. And Wally Podrazic, who's been with us right. over in Chicago, will also do. Uh, he's interviewing uh, Jack Oliver on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Main room. So we have Ivor Davis. Who is a trip. Who is a trip, yes. Al, you had the, you had the pleasure. Oh, he's, why don't you talk about Ivor Davis? Ivor is uh, Ivor is great. He's got uh, if you can keep him if you can keep him on the on the you know on the trail of what he really wants to be talking about. He's, 
And you did. How did you do that? Um, uh, you, you know. You can't, right? Just you kind can't. of get them, you know, just kind of rail them back, reel them back in, you know, to where the point is. So who would be hard to interview, Mark Hudson or Ivor Davis? <laughs> that, yeah, that would be tough because Mark is yeah. another one who goes off into tangents. Yes. Oh, there's another group who's playing. We try to get them in in, in New York, but when we booked them, it, it was a Jersey artist, and they didn't want to make the trip up, the parents. Uh, School of Rock in Chicago. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're I'm happy to have them because it, it's a performance-based school for mm-hmm. music. The children, 8 to 18, it's a wonderful concept. So they'll be there on Saturday afternoon. And we have uh, super guests the last year and a half, Vivek Tawari. Yes. He is really the nicest guy. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like, yes, he is. I don't think he has an enemy in the world. He's just a real sweetheart and loves his shows and was so upset that he can only do one day in New York this year because he had to go on vacation with his family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he came was- on Friday night. And I was sorry he wasn't in uh, L.A. because uh, I, w- I really was looking forward, really wanted to meet him, and I'm sorry. You know I... why he couldn't be there? Because he was invited to India. Right. So that right. Was, he couldn't pass up on that honor, and I said, you, you, of course you can't pass up on it. you got to do it. But yeah. he can have some new information about the uh, movie. Oh, wow. He'll have some video, some more, uh, AV stuff, but there will be new information, he told me. So okay. I don't know what it is because he didn't tell me. I didn't ask. I figured I'll wait till I get there. Uh, this guy, Bruce Spicer, yeah. he's a new author. He's never... He's, <laughs> um, right. He's, a, he's, been, he's very quiet. He has to be pushed into <laughs> into talking. Yes. He's, he's, he's the strongest author because he has six-pound books every time he comes out. <laughs> so he has to lift them all. So he has, right. he's, in, he's in the best shape. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have Jude Southern Kessler. She is a sweetheart. Okay. I read her whole book, She Loves You. I get so many books in my direction. If I was to read them all, I'd have to stop doing the fest for about 12 years. To give you an example, I'm reading t- Tune In now. I just got to page 700. I'm in, I'm on the day of, of recording on September, what was it September 11th, 62? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where I'm, that's where I, I'm at. Mm-hmm. I'm savoring every page. It's really an amazing book and I, and, but I was talking about Jude. Jude's book is also amazing. She tells the story in a different way, the, like the conversation. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. I really did. I didn't read her first two books. I read bits and pieces, which is what I try to do with every book. At least read a little bit of them and then come back and read more. Um, but she's, she's going to be on a early bird special or in the main room. She has other talks. She's doing something with Kid O'Toole. Mm-hmm. And she's she's into entertaining, and she and she knows, and she writes it all out, and she's very efficient. I'd say the most efficient. Or yes, very, very prepared. <laughs> yes, extremely prepared. Okay, Chuck Gunderson, we know all about him. He's, he's that book he put out, some fun tonight. Mm-hmm. You, you don't have to read it; just look at it, and you you pick pages, pick pick cities, you pick right. a year to look at, it, and you can go back and forth on it again. If you can get some help lifting the book. Right. right. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing it book. It really is. Yep, absolutely. And an author of a lighter book, uh, Andrew Grant Jackson. This book I've been mm-hmm. reading. Mm-hmm. I have this in my office. I read it a little bit mm-hmm. each day. 1965. It's really a good book. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning things about that year. You know, I know he and other people, I know Lou Simon says 1965 is his favorite year in music. Mm-hmm. We had a discussion about that in L.A. I think 64 was the best. But, you know, I may uh, change my mind. I don't know. But it's it's really, well, I didn't, I, the timing I didn't realize was so, how things fit together so well. And, you know, some of the uh, the writers, I may not have known that they wrote the song at the same time as Dylan. That's true. And, yes, very good. And his, his other book, like, where's... Where's Waldo is Where's Ringo. That's a very popular book. We sold mm-hmm. tons of those at Christmas time last year. David Swenson, 50th anniversary. You guys yeah. know? We just had him here last time. You did. Did you know that on August 15th, 1965, a lot of people went to see the Mets and they couldn't see them because the Beatles were playing there? Right. <laughs> Actually, who would go to see the Mets in 1965? 
Maybe that's how many games they won that year. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Uh, no, they didn't win 65. They won 53. <laughs> Did they really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you remember, you remember that, that. Yeah, I'm afraid that's, so. That's frightening. Let's, let's, let's give, give a few moments of silence for these Mets fans that will, through thick and thin, you're like Cubs fans. You don't have expectations except the Mets came through twice and won, which is good, because I root for the Mets for mm. the National League. But you know where I am. I was before I was born, I was a Yankee fan. Right, you and you and Allen. In the oh, Bronx. right. And Allen is now a a a Yankee fan in Red Sox country. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Yes, I'm fighting them all off daily. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, so Mark, I have like a question. That. Um, you know, you've, you've been doing these shows for now. It's going to be it's 41 years, um, and you've had every year guests kind of like the ones you've just run through and um, sometimes more famous, less famous, closer to the Beatles, further from the Beatles, what, whatever it is. I was just wondering if you've, um, if you've taped all of these things archivally, if you have a, a, a backlog of all of the um, information that has been in, in discussions that have taken place at the fest. Uh, yes, I have. I don't think I did it in 74 or 75. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It was before tape recorders were invented. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I think I have everyone since. We've been taping. We, it's for the archives. And somewhere in this house, they all exist. We've been mm-hmm. videotaping the shows for seven, nine, 20 years at least. Mm-hmm. And, that uh, can be, a, you know, a pretty valuable resource, you know. I mean, a lot of people who have come and, and uh, spoken, probably a lot of them, you know, some of them aren't around anymore, and the information that they've yeah. given or is, you know, is, is now archived. That's that's a good thing. Well, one of the things I was I was thinking about, Al, Al knows that I've been thinking about writing a book for, for 15 years already. <laughs> right. I the first, I wrote, I think 1992, 23 years, no, come to be 19. I don't remember. I have it somewhere in my notes that, I started writing the first few paragraphs a long time ago. Then I wrote three pages like four years ago. And the, the idea was, I really want to write this book. And I would like to ideally, although the time is never enough time, mm-hmm. to go through all those archives and how would help and find the quotes and the talking from the special guests and things that became part of the Beatles lore that weren't known until they were asked about it on stage at the fest. Uh-huh. Cause they had so many, there were so many stories there. And, you know, a lot of them weren't published, and then they would go on to write their books. I mean, there's uh, so many people. Alistair Taylor. Uh-huh. What a guy. He came over. Uh-huh. Nobody knew who he was. I mean, only the hardcore fans heard of him. Nobody ever saw him. Nobody knew him. And he was, the, he's one, he was one of the most popular guests we ever had. Is that an understatement, Al? Is that pretty? No, up? not not at all. Really, was a, he would he would walk around the hotel and do little groups. People would ask him questions. He'd stop and he'd, mm-hmm. he'd talk for a half hour. He was just a sweetheart, and he decided he was going to write a book, and uh, he did. And so many other guests. I know when um, one of the thing one of the early things I did that I was very proud of in 1990, 1990, we had Jerry Marsden. And Ray Coleman. Yeah. And on Monday after the fest, we went for Chinese food down the road in Secaucus a couple miles. Mm-hmm. And Jerry had said he was thinking of writing a book or doing his autobiography. So at lunch, I said, Jerry, you think of writing a book? Here's, here's Ray Coleman, a, a great writer, great mm-hmm. author. Why don't you guys do a book together? And they sure enough, they did. So that book. Came out, I guess, the, two years later, <laughs> and it was Jerry Parsons' nice. autobiography. And the guy's still going. I don't know how strong he is, but he's still going. Ray, we lost a long time ago. Yeah, but he was also, he was a great guest. Ray, oh, was, he was a wonderful guest. He had a trove of information, and, and he was very accurate. He was very, he was a re, he was a reporter. Yeah. So he he didn't say things unless he knew about it. You know, wouldn't make right. up stories. You know, a lot of the guests we've had over the years. They were, you know, when they, in the, in the heyday, the Beatles, people, they didn't take notes. They didn't say, well, this happened then. I mean, Alice would be talking, Victor Spinetti, same thing. One of our, he was probably the best entertainer guest we ever had. Mm-hmm. I, I would say that. Mm-hmm. I've seen them all for entertainment value. I think, uh, Victor Spinetti was tops. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I would agree. But he, he was he was great. He yeah. was a great interview. I I got to interview him. Uh, right, but I mean, he would that. have any idea what year you know. Someone would say, "When did that happen?" He says, "Oh, I don't know. I just it's part of my memory. You know, this, these are the stories." And same thing with Alistair. Oh yeah, we went on a trip. I John wanted me to buy an island in Greece, or then in, in Ireland, and I went and I tried to arrange this. When was that? I don't know. I, they're just stories that, you know, I guess when he wrote his book, he tried to figure out some of the time frame, but, you know, it was such a blur to them that the fact that any of them remember it is to our benefits. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Very few people wrote diaries in those days, mm-hmm. even though they were working with the Beatles or they knew them. It would have been nice, you know, but uh, it's all from memory for the most well, part. In Mark's book, there's, he found some of the fans who kept diaries. There were some nice little bits and pieces there. I like that part of the book. Mm-hmm. Okay, so where are we next? Oh, my favorite guest. Who's going to ask me who's my favorite guest? Well, I was going to I was going to ask you your favorite moment, but that, the favorite guest is probably a good is probably a good start because the you know favorite moments are things that happen just kind of spontaneous. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, my favorite guest. Answer the first, the favorite guest, and then, and then you do your favorite. <laughs> my moment. personal favorite guest was Donovan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I just I'm such a huge fan of his. When I asked if he play at Atlantis on on the stage, he said, "Sure, I'll play it for you." And I'm I'm crying behind the stage. I'm just I'm <laughs> looking at the audience. you. Al, remember when the first time he was here in New Jersey? Yeah, you oh, very well. Fit a shoe. You could not fit a shoehorn in that no. room. You, I mean, the room was people were standing on top of each other. It was mm-hmm. just complete, total fullness, like it used to be in the early days. Wow. And Donovan's playing his, all his songs, and with Liverpool, they were great. Then he does Atlantis, and and I'm saying, oh, my God, look at this. <laughs> uh, I'm watching Donovan play at my show. <laughs> oh, my God. My song, and it just, I just couldn't, I just lost it. I just, mm. it just really got to me. And he's just such a nice guy. He would play, let me play his green guitar. He came up to the room, came up to the staff party and played, I don't know for how long, an hour at least. At least. At least an hour. Oh, wow. Just wow. magical. Just, just totally magical. And the way he, one of the things he told us, it's a life lesson. This is a real good one. He said, when I'm talking to somebody, someone comes up to me and wants, wants to talk to me, no matter who it is, that's the most important conversation in his life at that moment. Mm. So he is so focused that he actually remembers everything. Mm-hmm. He is so clear, and his it just his lifestyle. You can tell that that's that's how he lives. He just he's so in tune with himself and with the world that it just came it just came out. And and I always remember that. And I wish I was I was better at that. And you know, it's it's hard. You get so many at the fest. So many people come up to me to talk to me. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't I can't always place names and faces. I can place names or see them at the fest. Say hi. I'll know who they are. But to know their stories, I just I'm just not that good at that. But here's Donovan, you know, international superstar. So my favorite Ken, that was your question. Was that Steve? That was Ken. No, that was that was that was that, that was, was my question. Favorite moment. Favorite moment. Well, the Donovan moment was, was definitely one of my favorite moments. Billy Preston, the man was dying. I yeah. saw him in his room before he went downstairs. Yeah. He could not get out of bed. My mm. brother was a doctor, sat with him at the side of the stage before he was going on to do a 40-minute concert. He couldn't, could hardly get up on the, the, those three steps. <sighs> so the interview, mm. he sort of like mm. just hardly moved. He got on the top step and, and leapt forward and did a 40-minute concert that was magic. I can't say to anybody the magic. And what happened when Cal and I walked him arm in arm to the to the signing table down the hall, to Jersey, people coming up to him and just like like it was like it was a beetle. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like Paul McCartney was there and saying, "I I can't believe I, what I just witnessed." It was just something about it. Maybe he just knew. That this could be the last one. Mm-hmm. He died four months later. Something like that. Wow. I think he had one, only one or two other appearances in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. He went to Germany right after that and did a small and I, thing. Yeah. But I think he knew. And he just poured his heart oh, out. Wow. And wow. for 40 minutes, nonstop, this guy who couldn't get out of bed, could hardly get on the stage. But you call his name out on the stage. He did what he had to do. 
Mm. And that's, that's, that's a human spirit that, that you, you have to see it to believe it. And we couldn't believe it. Mm. And yet it, ha- it was happening right before our eyes. And the audience mm. knew because they never came out. I've walked many guests to the tables. They didn't come up to us and go swooning no matter who it was. But they're talking like, like this was the greatest moment yet they ever saw. Mm. It was really incredible. That was a great moment. Going back yeah. a long time ago, 74, I could hardly get on the stage. I was so sick. Nervous. Mm-hmm. What am I doing? How did, how did, what's happening? Is, is, is the doors open? Or, is, is, did the show start yet? I'm with Tony King, Apple's official representative. Mm-hmm. And he tells me, he gives me, gives, shows me all the instruments that, that, uh, we got, uh, that for the charity. And he gives me a six copies, shows me six copies of the Penguin John Lennon that John signed to be auctioned off, cha- uh, auctioned off. And John signed the seventh one for me, personally, which Ooh. is still the most valuable, the best possession I have. Mm-hmm. And wow. he, he tells me these words. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there knowing the show is just about to start. Nervous as can be, almost throwing up. And he says, John wants to come down tomorrow night to pick the winner of the charity raffle. And... <laughs> 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 I'm saying that so clearly. I only told two people, and one was a, a, a New York City policeman who I happened to know from Cutches as a kid. We grew up together hmm. mm-hmm. every summer, so we mapped it out through the through the kitchen. We had set up a microphone in the balcony, and nobody knew it was there. It was hidden behind the screen, and May May Pang was his representative. Came down Saturday with all those. Pictures from Jürgen Volmer. Mm-hmm. That, that was mm-hmm. directly. Jürgen lived in the Bronx. Said Mark, uh, I have all these photos. What do I do with them? I said, Why don't you send me some one of each? So he sent me like I guess ten or eleven. No one. They were never published. Nobody ever saw them. I said, Make copies and sell them at the show. So he did, and that's when uh, May bought one of each. John saw it that night and said, That's the album cover. Mm-hmm. So I, I take credit on that. For, being, for making arranging that happen, John got cold feet on Sunday. Uh, maybe May Pang or Jim Kerr announced it on the radio that it was very crowded, which it was, of course. Sure. So oh, he just got cold feet and went up to his farm upstate New York the next day. So he didn't come down, but it was. The, I mean, Jim Jim Kerr was was announcing on the stage. I hear rumors that John's in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> but Bob Gruen told me this just last year. He said, Mark, I went into a phone booth for those young fans listening out there. What's a phone booth? There's, there used to be telephones <laughs> that right. were attached to a wall. You put in the dime and you dial it by hand. Anyway, he said, I called John from the lobby of the Commodore Hotel to tell him how great a show was and she'd come down. Hmm. So, I, and I just found out a year ago. Uh, the other great moment, another great moment was in 75, meeting Mal Evans. Mal, he paid me the greatest compliment I ever had in my life. He said, Mark, this was the greatest weekend of his life. And I'm saying to myself, what I would trade for any one of his weekends <laughs> in the 60s. Nobody knew who he was. Everybody knew, the, na- the fans knew his name. Nobody knew him. Nobody ever saw him. Hardly any right. pictures of him. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing in Magic Mr. Door, we didn't have any idea who Mal Evans was by picture. We didn't know he was in the back, background, mm-hmm. or in the bus. He just wasn't a known person. Sure. But there he was, people lining up long lines for autographs, and he was telling these stories. And then during Magic Mr. Tour at night, the movie, I'm sitting with him, he's telling me what's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> he keeps talking to me, Mark, oh, this is Paul, oh, when we went to, when we went to England, to France, and we didn't have a passport, we didn't have a penny to our name. <laughs> we just went. <laughs> we didn't God. Pass. It was freezing. Mark was like 30 degrees, we're freezing our asses off. <laughs> yeah. And he's telling wow. me stories, I wish I would have written them all down. So those are some of the highlights. More recently, well, there were just so many. I mean, I, I've, I've been so fortunate to meet every single person involved with the Beatles story, except Brian. I mean, Brian. you name him, I've, I've met him. From the Beatles to George Martin to, to all the people who worked there, to all our guests. And 
I, I just feel very fortunate that, uh, and the fact that I, I was able to bring so many people, it added to the to the historical importance of the Beatles. I mean, my my mother, rest her soul, mm-hmm. she always said, <laughs> "Mark, you're the reason that the Beatles are still popular." <laughs> <laughs> she said that all along. Mm-hmm. I said, "Mom, thank you. I, maybe I'm helping a bit, but they're still around and they're still playing music, and <laughs> they're uh, they're the reason." We just. I- I got, I got to share a story that happened one of the at one of the LA fests. Mark, I've told you this before. I was walking by the auditorium and I hear this music that I recognize. Uh, I hear this voice singing "Kicks," and I'm going, That's not, "That sounds like Mark Lindsay." I open the door, and it's Mark Lindsay, and I'm and I just absolutely go crazy because I am the biggest Paul Revere and the Raiders fan. And as soon as he came off stage, I ran down the hall. Uh, held, uh, held a program in his hand and got him to sign a, an autograph, and I was just absolutely uh, thrilled. And my friend who was with me named Joe, who was probably listening, Joe, if you're listening, kidded me about that uh, year for years, and he said, you went absolutely crazy, and I did, and I did. <laughs> and we had Phil Volk show up a couple of years later. Oh, wow. We, we met him at, mm. at Disneyland. He worked at Disneyland. Yeah, no. you know, no. do you know, do you know, on our honeymoon, you met my wife in L.A. Yes. On our honeymoon, we were at we were at the Tomorrowland Terrace, and we were watching this group play. And I was going, you know, that looks like Phil Volk and Paul Revere and the Raiders and this guy doing the electrical stuff next to me. Said, yes, it is him. And they actually let us downstairs below the stage and meet them. And it was him and his wife from uh, where the action is. But oh my God, that was. Uh, but, yeah. Yes, those were good days. So we have, I haven't, I told you all the guests, but we haven't said when the Chicago Fest is. Or how you did. When is it? <laughs> it is August 14th, 15th, and 16th. Two weeks. Two weeks from oh, when now. this first airs. Right. At the Hyatt Regency O'Hare in, uh, actually, Rosemont, <laughs> Illinois, Rosemont. which is right outside of Chicago. It's right, right uh, near, yeah. right near O'Hare International Airport. Uh, one, before we run out of time though, one thing I need to ask you about. Yes. Because people, you know, a lot of people, especially in the wild and woolly world of social media, are always complaining about, ah, the format's always the same, it's always the same. Well, it's not always the same. And in fact, it's the format of the fest has been changing quite a bit. Yes. Over the course of the last year, there are a lot of new rooms that yeah. have not been there in the past. And one of which, which I think really requires some explanation, is the Fabratory. The Fabratory, yes. Michelle came up with the idea. And it's it's a little room, and people, either people who, who uh, some of the guest authors, some of the guests would come in. Tom Franjone did, did a, a piece. Right. Uh, in there, and you could sit there, you could analyze, you could pick a song, you could pick a little topic, and just discuss it, only that topic. And it may be 10, 12, 5, 15 people in the room, but it, it's, it's a deep discussion, and it's not like a, a, it's like in a semicircle, so you feel like you're just, you're talking amongst friends, which you are, Beatle friends. Mm-hmm. And it actually worked pretty nicely in Jersey, in New York. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of New York, one thing I gotta tell you guys, we did announce it last week, we are going back to Festchester, as Jessica named it, to the to the Hilton Westchester. Ken, I know it's you. You're really upset that that five minute commute is. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, the weekend. Well, for all the years that, for all the years I had a schlep <laughs> all the way to New Jersey, it's a lot easier for me. But I'm sure the people in New Jersey are not. Well, may first not of all, it's the weekend of, August, of April 15th through 17th, so all the accountants can now come. This <laughs> over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what it is? It's, it's a lot of Jersey people, not a lot, some think of the Hudson River as the, as a Pacific Ocean. Yes. That they won't go. They won't go see Paul McCartney at the Garden because it's in New York. Right. So, they so think it's still right. Fort Apache, the Bronx. But, you know, right. We have, we have people <laughs> coming from 30 states for the, for the New York show and the Jersey shows. And they come from all over the place, and not all of them fly. We have people drive from North Carolina, from Georgia, from Florida, from Cleveland, from Tennessee, it was even from Texas. So why, why are people complaining about 41 minutes difference 
if they live in South or Central Jersey. Really? It's not – if you had to go mm. from the Jersey Hotel to Manhattan to see a Broadway show, unless you go at 2 in the morning, it's going to take you 40 minutes to go those four miles. It is. So right. it's like, you know, some people – there are some people – as soon as we announced – you know, as soon as the roof collapsed in uh, Jersey in the parking right. lot, there were some people who said, I, I can't go. It's too far away. I said, it's only 40 minutes oh. further. Yeah. So – I actually love the layout oh, of that hotel. Layout. I right, only right. didn't like the fact that there's no escalator when you walk in because you can't get up to that floor mm-hmm. unless you know where the secret elevator is. But other than that, right. other my knees are, are separate from the story. Yeah. It plays a, <laughs> Mine too. It's a very nice layout, and we have had rooms for. And in April, we'll be able to do more activities outside. There's a terrace out there. The hotel is going to be setting up, uh, going to correct the uh, issue with the parking. Uh, we already have an extra parking lot, which was a little issue because it, it snowed on the Friday. It snowed on that Friday, yeah. So we a lot of space was taken up. So that's uh, that's that's next April. So we'll talk about that some other time. Mark, let me ask one more quick question, and uh, if you can answer this quickly, I think a lot of people kind of wish that a beetle would show up at at one of the fests, and obviously that's you know that's impossible. But talk, can you talk well, about that? I mean, has that? I, had, I wouldn't say it's impossible, Steve. I, I will never think in my mind that it'll never happen. Mm-hmm. All right. When I invited George in '76, when I met him outside the courtroom, when he was trying to get out of his A&M contract, mm-hmm. there was a, there was a, I, I offered my services as a as a witness to why George Harris music should be out there and not tied up in courts. But I t- I talked to him for at least a half hour, and I invited him to the show. He said, I'd love to. I, I know all about it. I've already have promotional films for the new album that I'm going to send down to the show. Uh, but I'm playing, I'm going to be in New York for Saturday Night Live on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And of course he was. We know that famous show. Right. Right. Um, but he was very friendly. We talked Beatles. It was, <laughs> I couldn't believe I was talking to George Harrison for a half hour. Mm-hmm. It was like oh. magical. You know, it was just, you know, what else can I say? It, it, it was just, Wow. You know, those moments that you never forget. The, the second part of your question was? Well, I mean, would, would, I mean, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, is there a... Oh, a it, beetle it, showing it, up. Well, the right. outside of the fact that John was going, was wanted to come down on the first night that nobody knew about, Harry was working on Ringo for many, many years. He kept telling us he's mm-hmm. getting very close, getting close to getting him there, and then he, he died. Mm-hmm. Mark Hudson was working on it for a while, and then... They had their separation. They had a separation. I would think, of, between the two of them, I think the one more likely to come would be Paul. Really? Yes. Except he's Except he's always on tour. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's always... Oh, where did he right. play this week? Oh, Lollapalooza. Well, that was last right. night. Yeah. Was that last night or two nights ago? No, it's it's no, it's it's coming no, up. That's it's coming coming up. up no, that's coming up. No, no, no. This show is uh, is on afterward. You said the show. When did this show go air? On Saturday or Sunday? Oh, it'll it'll air after. It first airs on Saturday. There you go. So yeah. so Lollapalooza was last night. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, I mean, it, it's it, Paul. Paul does spend a lot of time in does. New York. I mean, yeah, I was hoping so. for the New York City show because I thought he might be in town. Mm. And he was, but he left on the Friday. Right. And, you know, maybe I just think at some point they're going to just get curious and say, why not? Mm-hmm. Has, it, has there ever been any consideration of doing a video appearance, getting, you know, doing a, a remote, a video remote of getting a, a, kind of some kind of exclusive video thing that way? I, I've i never asked for video. I don't want to do that. Whenever okay. Every, yeah, I, I, I don't want, I, I try not to impose on them. You know, they have their okay. lives. Right. Um, and we do, we do the show. They know what we do. They, they know who we are. They're aware of us. They really like, they have to like the fact that we do it after all these years. Sure. And, uh, but for them showing up, it's not like, uh, it's not like, uh, Star Trek, not like Lennon the Moy and. Right. Right. The other guy, William Shatner. 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 Right. Shatner. No, come. Yeah. It's a, it was a, a, a made up, you know, it was a fictitious show. This was real people who, who changed our planet, became mm-hmm. the four most famous people ever to walk the planet, in my opinion. Right. Right. So. Okay. Mark, I, I have a couple of questions. First of all, I just want to know you mentioned all the guests 
lined up for the Chicago Fest. You didn't mention Gary Wright. He no, Gary scheduled, Wright is correct? not scheduled. I thought he was on the he list. He was on the original list, but we didn't know the mailing went out without him. Gary called. Gary said he can come on Friday and Saturday only. He called me right as we're going to print. Okay. Oh, we did the four-day pre-sale. Right. I know what happened, Ken. Thank you for reminding me. When we announced the initial the four-day pre-sale for tickets, we announced Gary Wright. He called me about, I think, just two days before we went. To, we printed the card. He said, Mark, I can't come. I goofed. It wasn't the Friday and Saturday. It was the Sunday. I have to be there on Saturday and Sunday. He does this retreat that he's one of the guest speakers or guest appearances there. And he's been doing it for many, many years. He said, I just, I can't mm. do it. I'm sorry. Mm. I promise I'll come next year for sure, but I can't do it this year. Mm. So there you are, the special guest okay. for this year. All right. The other question I wanted to ask is, who, I love the stories that you told, especially about sitting next to Mal Evans yeah. watching Magical Mystery Tour. Mm. That's priceless. But of all the people that you've had as guests, are there any that you came to know, you know on a personal level, you know, to become friends? I mean, I can imagine doing the fest every weekend. You're running around like a lunatic, making sure everything is is running smoothly, so you don't get to watch all the interviews. No, that's why I, that, like the that's rest of us can. The reason why I tape them so I can listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I become friends but, with, uh, with many of them. Uh, Frida, we became good friends. Mm -hmm. Alistair Taylor, when he was over, we went to uh, we took a Cal and I took him for a lunch. It was a lunch or a dinner? I think it was a lunch mm -hmm. at the World Trade Center. And it was the only time I was ever up there. Oh, nice. Mm. Believe it or not. Mm. That was 1984. Mark Hudson's a good friend. Louise we, we got together with. Harry, of course. Harry, many times. We were, we were at his house. Oh, mm -hmm. party. We were, <laughs> I went to a Harry Nielsen party and survived. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It was just a, an A-list. Penny Marshall was there. Shari Lewis was there. Um, Stephen Bishop. It was the night of the premiere of The World According to Garp. How do mm -hmm. I know that? Because the one and only Robin Williams came to the party late. Oh, my. We were there. I was mm. sitting, I happened to be sitting next to his wife for a few minutes, and we're talking, and she lights a cigarette, and I said, would you mind if you just, this is, this is Hollywood, guys. This is, this is God's honest truth. Would you mind if, if you just hold the cigarette in the other hand. She said, oh, I'm sorry if it bothers you. I'll put it right out. She put it right out, took another cigarette out, lit it up, had no clue that she did it. <laughs> no clue. Can you imagine? Maybe there was drugs around somewhere. But, <laughs> but No way. So, so, no way. So Robert Williams walks in. I got to talk to him for a little bit. It was a, it was a thrill. I, I, it's like I said it to Harry. I, I said to Harry, I love Popeye. The first, first time, first thing out of my mouth when I met Harry, not, not from 74, of course, but this was, you know, much later. Mm -hmm. Um, first thing I said, I said, I, re Popeye had just been out, I guess. I said, I really like the music. He said, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for opening up that door and make it nice and simple to start a conversation. <laughs> we got wow. him asleep. And, in the Harry story, there were so many great things about Harry. He loved being, he was known as this, this star that never performed. Right. But at, at the fest, he performed, once he got on stage, you couldn't get him off. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. I think he, his, his life was so full of being medicated, drinking and drugs yeah. and hanging out with the top of the top A-list. I think mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson was in the, in the garden the whole time, didn't come in. I think he was right outside. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And he, when he came to the fest, he was just, he could just be himself. And he was just hanging, he, I mean, he was really good friends with Liverpool, especially with, with, um, with Drew and with Chris. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go out and tour with them. That was his plan bef the year before he died. He had, he had was recording, oh, wow. wanted them to go, they, there were actual physical real plans made to, to really to do a tour. Oh my. Uh, yeah. And, but, that would have been really, something. But he had so wow. many stories, and and um, he was just—he was so quick. He was just there. You, know, you had to be quick to hang around with with Ringo and John all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was just mm. very. You could see. You could see the, the how you you knew. I could feel how closely he was to them, just the way he talked. Obviously, we didn't meet up with with him for gun control until after John right. was assassinated, but. Mm. 
Ringo said on TV, who's your, be- who's your favorite, uh, who's your best friend? Harry. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, right. So that was, that was a 12 years he was there. And I don't think he missed more than one or two fests. And he was just raised a lot of money for gun control. We recorded a record with a bullet. That's right. Yeah. Right. So right. those, I could go on and on about great moments. It was just, I, I just, friends, who, who was, who was I still friends with? I said Alice the Taylor. We got together. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow, Billy J. Kramer, we see regularly now. Sure. Mm-hmm. Honey. Right, right. We see them quite a bit. The DJs, Ken Dashow is a good friend of ours. We I play golf with them a few weeks back. Just a lot of them. We got to see, you know, to talk to them and then and hung out. Donovan, we went to see in uh, Asbury Park after the fest uh, in ninety in two thousand and three. We went out for dinner. We had a wonderful time. It was really very pleasant, and we got together with him again when he when he played in New York. We got to see him in another venue, and that was a, a big thrill. You know, really, he was the one who said, "Let me come. Let's why don't we? Why don't they invite me back again? Maybe in a year." This was in two thousand. This was for two thousand thirteen. I said, "Well, why don't we make it for the fortieth anniversary, fiftieth anniversary, two thousand fourteen?" Mm-hmm. You got it. So that was like a year and a half ahead of time. I I booked Donovan. The party, the Harry Nilsson party, that's a show oh, to yeah, itself. I, I can't even think of all the, the, the guests who were there. Carol has a better memory, but there were a lot of people. And, and just, but just what, uh, Robin, how did, how was holding that pipe in your mouth? The whole movie. Wow. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, he was, he was amazing as Papa. Terrible. He really I was. It. So we asked him a <laughs> question. I hated it. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was just a thrill to meet him, you know. Really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was one of a kind. I don't know anyone who had a light. No, there was like, nobody. Like he him. was the top yeah. of the top. He was he was the Beatles of comedy. I mean, nobody could touch him. Right. Like, plenty of great mm. comedians, but nothing like right. He, you get him started. You don't have to get him started. He just self started and just would go forever and and he was just the, the funniest. So, if you've ever seen Inside the Actor's Studio oh, with Robin God. Williams, which they had to make a three-parter, oh yeah. you know, he's asked one question, yeah. he goes off yeah. for half an hour. You don't even have to, you don't even have no. to say anything. It's, it's very special. We miss him. Miss him terribly. Definitely. Sure Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys. Well, this you. has been a uh, show. flower. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's an, it's it's unfortunate that you're so withdrawn and you have nothing to. <laughs> I'm a very shy guy, aren't exactly. I? Exactly. <laughs> thank you, Mark. We'll yes, have, thank we'll you very, very, very we'll much. We'll have to do a show, a Sam Goody show. At yeah, one of these days we'll have to start telling old Sam Goody war stories because oh. uh, you know tr- um, Mark and I have been friends and colleagues and whatever for uh nearly 45 years well, you started in 71 right Seven, that- oh i started on 11 17 70 really because your first my kaplan son was born because your first order to me well two first orders to me tell, tell the audience what my first order was first order <laughs> was never run out of beatles records there you go the second order was that i had to listen to a concert that night on the, on the old WABC FM in New York by right. this new singer songwriter called Elton John. Right. And that was the concert that became six or seven months later, well, the 11, 1770 seven. album. And that, and we, Mike Kaplan who worked with us, his son was born on that day. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's also my, my birthday. Is it? Is yes, it? it is. Really? Yes, it is. 1970? No. No. <laughs> No, no, no. A little sooner than, a little earlier than that, but yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, Mark. Al, 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 thank you, Mark. I will see you in two weeks. I will see you in two weeks. Absolutely. Right, so we'll, we'll try to see you, uh, well, at least, uh, maybe Al, Al maybe come down next year, and I'm sure Ken, you'll see you next year. That's yes, the, you'll mm-hmm. see me and Ryan. Uh, we'll see everybody else who's anywhere near Chicago. Well, people have signed up from 30 states and three continents, so, Anyway you listen, folks, if you haven't signed up, you haven't been to a fest, what are you waiting for? There's still rooms left. And the first, <laughs> there and the we first go. one is always great. Yep. Yes. So it's uh, August 5th, uh, 14th, 15th, and 16th yep. at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare in uh, right outside of Chicago. Yep. And uh, go to thefest.com for all the details. Right. 
There Guys, we go. thank you very much. Mark. Good night. Thank you very Good much. Night, Mark. And, uh, thank, thank you, Mark. You peace, peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Alan, Steve. Peace and, and love. Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Right. Keep up Thanks, the good Mark. work, guys. Okay. Good night. Take this, care. Is, this has been a blast for <laughs> uh, for Ken Michaels, for Steve Marinucci, and Alan Cozen. We will see you next time. Yeah.